So, um, I want to start from a very simple premise, which is that to stop pretending about the future means stopping pretending about the present. And to really crystallize this out in a fairly abrupt way, uh, I'm going to say something and I want you to think about it, which is the war has already begun and you did not notice because your side won. Right? Um, the lifestyle that you have right now is built on colonialism. It's built on great armies of land pirates that marched out into the corners of the world and stole everything worth having and killed anybody who got in the way. Right? India, where half of my family is from, was an occupied country by British colonialists until Gandhi stood this colonial process down stood your government down and asked you to leave. 1948, Second World War. You guys were land pirates. Okay? Is this beginning to sound real? Right? Now, where are we right now? Uh, according to the World Health Organization, every single year, 60 million people die. That's all races, all classes, all causes. That's the total exit from human life every year. Roughly 20 billion of those deaths, by my estimate, are deaths from poverty. It's diarrheal disease, it's malaria, it's enormous HIV infection rates in Africa. You can just go through and take a look at the World Health Organization stats, and it comes down that about one third of the people who die on this planet die of poverty every year, about 20 million. Okay? Now, let's put this into context. Um, when human beings are desperate, when they need something that they cannot have, they become aggressive. And there are two broad categories of direction for this aggression. The first is aggression towards other human beings, violence, and this is the colonial impulse. And this is not something that is restricted to the West. There were colonial empires that have emanated from every corner of the globe when people got a chance they could organize. South America had empires which were brutal beyond anything ever conceived of here. India has ancient empires. But this aggression towards other people is one of the two places that desperation can manifest. The other is aggression towards other species, where you take a piece of land which has trees growing on it, and you need a house, and you fell the trees and you build one. Well, the trees are dead and you're alive. And the question that we are really searching for is, what does it look like when we stop living by violence towards other people or towards other species? Does this seem like a sensible question? Yeah. Huh. Okay, good. So, the first thing you have to do is stop being violent. What that means is identifying what violence looks like. Right? Um, one of the things which sits in the background of our awareness is the threat of something that we call collapse. Economic collapse, social collapse. We talk about guys like Dmitry Orlov, you know, this is something I've studied, right? Let me crystallize what collapse means. Collapse means living in the same conditions as the people who grow your coffee. That's what you mean by social collapse. Now, where is the violence? The first step to stopping violence is identifying it. A collapse is living in the same conditions as the people who grow your coffee. It's becoming part of the third of the human race that dies every year from poverty. When the Russians had their social collapse and their economic collapse, Life expectancy in Russia dropped something like 20 years. They went from dying in their 70s to dying in their 50s on average. There's a neighborhood in Glasgow called the Colton where life expectancy is 56, which is the same as the Congo. Where's the violence? Do you see what I'm saying? So what we're searching for is a lifestyle which is free of violence towards other people 
and violence towards the planet. And the thing that I want to impress upon you is that this war is current. You are protected from being in the third of the human race that will die of poverty by armies, by nuclear weapons, by trade treaties, by the World Health Organization, by the enormous spending power of the governments which were built on slave labor. Right? This is not somebody else's future. This is the present of most humans. The collapse is not something that might happen one day. It's already over most of the planet, and we exist on a militarized island of prosperity. Now, what is the exit from this condition? How do we get from here to where we want to be? The answer has been demonstrated. In India, there is a place called Kerala, and Kerala is a sub-state. It's a, it's a country inside of India. It's a region. And Kerala has about 60 million people. It's about the same size as the UK. Now, um, Kerala is largely made of farmers, and they grow most of their own food. Many of the people work abroad. Here's the remarkable thing about it. Although at the level of poverty they're at, which is roughly one dollar a day of average income, you would expect them to have short, brutal lives. They have 95% literacy. Their birth and death rates are right in line with Europe. Their average life expectancy is 76 years. Their ecological footprint is about 0 0.7, which means that they're consuming a smaller share of the Earth's resources than they might theoretically be entitled to, and living right about as long as we do, which means that what they have broken through is the sustainability barrier, where they have long life and good health on an ecological footprint which the entire world could have. Everybody could live like the people of Kerala, and we would be something like one-third over human bio... Uh, under, something like one-third under human biocapacity. That's what an answer looks like. Now, the lifestyle that we have in the rich countries, and I'm fortunate enough to live in one, I'm a British citizen, is going to become unsustainable. It's already unsustainable, and it's not just unsustainable in environmental terms. It's unsustainable in economic terms. Right now, your governments are borrowing vast sums of money from your children which will never be repaid. You hear about $12 trillion magically appearing from nowhere in America to bail out the banks. That's the same amount of money that went into the Pentagon since the fall of the Cold War. They spent 20-something years of defense budget in a single year to bail out the banks. Does that give you a sense of how much money this was? Right? In the September 2008 stock market crash, something like $108,000 disappeared from the average wealth of the average American household. What is going to happen very soon is that we are going to get abruptly poorer, and the reason that we haven't noticed that we are in fact abruptly poorer is that we are borrowing from the people we oppress. And we're borrowing from unborn generations who in all probability will be no more able to pay their way than we are. The global average standard of living is somewhere around that of Mexico. And as the enormous bubble of wealth created by colonialism begins to wear out, there is no reason why a child born in England should have a better expectation of a quality of life than a child born in Mexico or India or Africa. What makes us different that we expect to live in luxury while the rest of the world starves? It is one world. We have to build a common future in which we consume so little that the world can support us and not die and we must share and cooperate so effectively that human beings are freed from the impulse to hurt each other for more than their fair share. And this is not impossible. It's been demonstrated. And now you are each individually responsible for identifying where the violence is in your life, right through the supply chains, right through the energy grids and right through your government, to figure out what it means to live as a responsible human being 
who takes no more than their fair share and oppresses no other by your very existence. This is the challenge of the 21st century and this is what it means to stop pretending.